Hello again. When we made the series of AC coaching modules in 2020, I didn't really expect to be making yet another one. But various people have asked me if I can say something about the advanced game of uh, association croquet. So we're going to talk about that in, in fairly sketchy detail, um, but there, were, there are one or two other things that have happened in the meantime that you need to know about. First of all, in 2020, the World Croquet Association published the draft edition of what were to become the seventh edition of the Association Croquet Laws. And now the CA has produced the, the hand-sized version, the yellow book, which is considerably bigger and fatter than the original sixth edition. It's more than twice as long. Not because it contains any new laws, but because the, the wording has been simplified and extended to include various things which were not included in the sixth edition. So on the videos where I put the uh, law in either yellow print for the old sixth edition or the white for the seventh edition, you just need to now to concentrate on the white uh, numerals which are on the uh, videos themselves. The other thing that's happened is that Roger Mills, who is a, a very well-known coach and works primarily in the southwest of England in Budley Salterton and Sidmouth, has produced two excellent books about association croquet. The first one, which is the greenback, is called Getting Maximum Bang for Your Bisques and it's really of use to people who are of a handicap of say 18 or less for association croquet and who are needing to learn how to use their bisques to greatest effect. Now we covered quite a lot of this stuff in the video modules but Roger has uh, expanded on those ideas, well they, they weren't my ideas to start with, but Roger has expanded upon them and given you an excellent uh, resume of how to get the maximum bang for your bisques. And the other book that he's produced very recently in 2022 is this book, which is the blue cover. It's called Taming the Triple. Now, if you've only ever played handicap croquet, this will mean very little to you, but it's going to come into importance in the words that I'm going to be telling you about the advanced game in the final module of this uh, series. So, and you can get both of these books from the CA shop and they are £16.50 each, but well worth investing in them. We're going to talk about advanced uh, association croquet. I think it's actually a pity that it's called advanced because it's not really that different from handicap association croquet and the very name advanced gives the impression that somehow it's a lot more complicated. Well, in some ways it is, but all the strokes are just the same as we've learnt in the, uh, in the handicap game and all you've got to do here is to think about ball positioning. Now, we're going to pick up from, this is the fifth turn of a game. Uh, I'm playing black and blue and I put my balls on the east boundary as we did in module two. And guess what? I'm going to do the usual roque black, go around, pick up the other balls and run the hoops. Now, good players can routinely go all the way around in one turn, uh, perhaps leaving the, in that case, blue ball on rover hoop and then leaving a leave and which the opponent misses if he's got no bisques and uh, then the black ball plays and does the same. Goes round, does a rover peel, pegs out. And the poor old opponent has had three shots. Two to, with, the, with the tice, one a shot with his other ball perhaps missing the tice, three the um, missed leave shot. And so people are sitting there for two hours thinking what on earth am I doing here? I could spend my time reading the paper or something, doing something useful. So advanced croquet is really fairer croquet. It's a way of giving both players more of a chance. Okay, the, the, the second player is still at a slight disadvantage. It's, it's always an advantage, generally speaking, if you win the toss to go in first because you have this first opportunity to build a break. And 
what the advanced game does is to create so-called so penalty hoops and we'll talk about those next. So here we are at hoop seven, one back. So far, so normal. I played off my own uh, partner ball, the black, to come through hoop six, and I sent the black down to uh, two back, hoop eight, as a pioneer. I then played off the red in the center of the court to come back to the yellow, and now we'll run hoop uh, one back, hoop seven. Now, having done that, I'm now into the penalty hoop area because once I've run this hoop with my ball, either ball, the blue or the black, at the end of this turn, be it accidental or deliberate, my opponent can lift either of his balls, either the yellow or the red, and play off any point on either ball line. So I'm going to carry on and deliberately stop after I've run hoop three back and make a leave and all being well it'll be a diagonal spread leave but I'll show you just basically how that is done. So playing the yellow in the usual way and sending it over to hoop three back hoop nine. Okay. So this is just a half roll stroke as usual sending the yellow down to two back, uh, down to three back. So just a little tap on the red. And I'm going to do a thin takeoff to go back down to my Pioneer for two back, which is the black. As it happens, that shot has landed my blue ball straight in front of the hoop, just a foot or so out. So I'm just, I'm not going to bother coming off the uh, Pioneer, I'm just going to run through the hoop. Miles away. So now I need to think about constructing my leave. I'm going to put both opponent balls in slightly awkward positions, but leaving my own balls fairly close together so that black can continue the break after in my next turn. And instead of putting black up to uh, four back, 
hoop 10 as I would normally do in a handicap game. This time I'm going to put both balls quite close to the peg. So it's a roll stroke. So again, a little gentle tap on the red. And then going back down to the yellow, which is my pioneer for three back hoop nine. So I've come through hoop nine, three back. I'm going to put this yellow ball um, somewhere quite close to the west boundary, just south of hoop two. And uh, with a half roll stroke, end up somewhere near the red ball. Um, now, so the point of this leave is to make uh, it difficult for my opponent to hit one of my balls directly. He will have the opportunity of lifting either of his balls at the end of this turn, either the red or the yellow, but I want to make it difficult for him. So I'm just going to very gently roquet the red and then hopefully leave it tight up against the peg. So now I'm going to play my black ball. And I'm going to roll both balls over to the east boundary to create a, a straight line through the yellow ball, the red ball and the peg of course to over there. So I'm taking croquet and it's a good idea just to walk over, have a look at the place on the east boundary here, where I want to end up. And of course you can't mark it, but you can get a, an idea in your mind as to where you want to be. So this is just a, a roll stroke, of course I must be careful not to go off with either ball, otherwise it's end of turn. And that's not bad. And I'm just going to put my... This is actually a bit awkward because I could have done with the black going a little bit further, but never mind. I'm going to play the black ball next, hopefully, but I'm going to put the blue about there. So here we are, and you'll see in a moment that the, all four balls are in a uh, roughly in a straight line um, with the yellow ball on the far side of the court, the red ball by the peg, and my two balls over here. So that's a, a diagonal spread leave. It's, it's a relatively easy leave. There are more difficult leaves 
um, but for the moment, just until you're into the swing of doing uh, leaves, just stick with the easy ones. Don't try and make life too complicated. Now, as I said, from here on, it's the opponent's turn to play, and he can lift either ball, the red or the yellow. Now, he has to look to see where um, his own clips are and where my clips are. Uh, I would probably, at this stage, have only uh, the blue clip on, which would now be on hoop 10 or four back, and the black clip might well be on hoop one. Um, so he doesn't really want to give me any more easy breaks, and it's up to him to decide which ball he's going to lift and shoot. Uh, and it's always best to shoot at a ball rather than hide away in a corner somewhere. You've got to try and put pressure on the opponent because he's in, a, in the advanced game, this is your chance to get back into the game and make a start at a break. Now it's important that the opponent doesn't touch either ball un until he's made a decision about which ball he's going to lift. If you touch either ball, you may not put it back again and you must play that ball from up one of the ball lines. Now I think you can probably see that if uh, yellow were to hit in and get one of my balls, he has got a, quite a good rush down to hoop one by hitting the red ball, even though it's right tight on the peg. Uh, so that's the ball that he might want to, 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 to lift, the yellow, if yellow was for hoop one. If red was for hoop two, for example, he might want to lift the red, because the yellow is not a bad pioneer for hoop two. So you've got to think about these things before you touch either ball. And the other point to, to think about is, can he make anything into a double? In other words, two balls which uh, apparently are quite a long way away, but if you can change the angle, you can make them into apparently a wide single ball. And you can do that by moving along the balk line and seeing if you can make, say, my two balls here into a double. Now, we've talked about uh, lift hoops or penalty hoops. There are a couple of other things that you need to be well aware of. First of all, you only give away a lift if a, b if a ball runs a hoop for itself. If it's peeled through a hoop, the lift doesn't count, it's not given. So we've now moved on in this little game a, a little way. Here is the blue ball sitting nicely in front of its next hoop, which is four back, hoop 10. The black has run hoops one and two, so it's for hoop three. In other words, the same hoop from the other side. And uh, we're going to do that just now. So the black brocade the, the blue, so we're taking croquet off the blue, and I'm going to peel the blue through its next hoop. And as usual with peels, you've got to line them up carefully. The other thing to remember with peels at corner hoops, of course, is if the blue ball should go off the court, if I hit it too hard, that will be end of turn because it's a croquet stroke. So you've got to be a little bit careful here. And you notice that I've got a red ball standing by. That's called the escape ball. And we had a look at those when we did uh, rover peels in the, in, in the handicap series. So I'm playing off the escape ball. So I'm leaving the blue ball here, and I'm going to put the escape ball, the red, down to hoop five, as a hoop five pioneer, and then get close to the yellow, which is my hoop four pioneer.
So this is actually slightly overtaking roll. So by peeling that blue ball through four back hoop 10, first of all I uh, negated the lift turn which uh, my opponent would have had if the blue had run the hoop on its own. I've also initiated a triple peel and what I'm trying to do here is to peel the blue through its last three hoops. So that's, we've already done four back, then it's penult hoop 11 and finally rover hoop 12. And the idea is to do all that with the black ball in a single turn so that the opponent doesn't get another chance. So here we are close to hoop four with the hoop four pioneer which is the yellow. And just a gentle tap on the yellow. And I'm just going to uh, run through the hoop. Now I need to move that blue ball from sitting behind uh, hoop four back, hoop ten, to a peeling position in front of penult. So what I'm going to do here is to rush the yellow down the lawn and then rush the blue ball from where it is to um, the front of hoop eleven. So here we are, quite close to hoop, uh, hoop 10. I'm just going to do a little take off to get into a position to rush the blue back over here. So I'm rushing the blue just across towards penult. Dead straight shot. Now remember black is still for hoop five there. So I'm just going to do a thin takeoff to go down to the red ball which I put down by hoop five after we'd run uh, hoop three with the black. Well, that wasn't a brilliant shot. I've ended up about 10 feet from the red, but it should be okay. So now, absolutely bog standard, run hoop five with the black and putting, hoop, uh, putting red just the other side of the hoop as usual. So I've come through hoop five with the black. I need to put the red ball across to uh, one back for the black as the pioneer ball. Absolutely normal. And I need to get that yellow back into play as my hoop six pioneer. So this is a a wide roll shot. I 
Just kind of cut this into the wards the, the hoop a little bit, make the next stroke a bit easier. So, black going through hoop six, and then there's that blue ball waiting the other side. And I've broken it again. So we are peeling the blue now again, this time through penalt. Again, you need to be careful. This is quite a long peel. I didn't really want to hit it on the way through. So now I have my yellow ball, um, which I'm going to just convert effectively into a, a, um, a pivot. It's going to be a little difficult in a minute, but never mind. So we're just taking croquet off the yellow, going up to the red. So the, the reds ended up the wrong side of the hoop, but it doesn't matter too much. We'll just take croquet gently. And through um, hoop seven with black. Now, of course, having run hoop seven, if black turn ends for any reason after this, we again away and lift. So we've got to be careful at this point not to leave any balls anywhere near any balk line because that would give the opponent a very easy roquet chance. So you need to be, if there are balls by a balk line at this point in the game, you need to move them quickly. Otherwise, if you make a mistake and the turn ends, you're giving the opponent a very easy uh, break building opportunity. But from here on, it's just carry on as usual. So I'm just going to put um, the red ball down to a three back hoop nine in the usual manner as a pioneer and then play off the yellow as a pivot and put the blue over to my next hoop for the black, which will be two back or hoop eight. Just nudging off yellow, I'm not going to do anything spectacular with it. I'm actually, I'm just looking at that. And that's a, a, dolly, a dolly rush straight down to hoop eight. So I'm going to do that. I was slightly enthusiastic with my dolly rush, but I'm actually just looking at that, I'm going to come round this side. It's more or less dead in line, but slightly leaning to this side of the, the hoop line.
So we've now run hoop eight and it's more or less back to handicap uh, methodology. We're going to put the yellow across to uh, four back for the black, um, hoop 10, come off the blue, bringing the blue a bit closer to, to Rover. We, we still need to peel the blue through one more hoop, so we need to get it down here. So this is a, uh, a roll stroke to get the black the other side of the blue. It didn't quite go where I wanted it to, but it's good enough. Gentle hit on the blue. And putting blue in a position to, so it can run Rover. And black to rush red down to three back. So I'm just uh, doing a, another thin takeoff on the red. and roquet the red again. Now, as ever, red is going down to the other side of Penult as a pioneer, and I just want to be in a position to nudge the blue ball slightly closer to Rover. So it's a little drive stroke, really. Just a little gentle nudge. So this is just a thin take off and I'm going down to the yellow, which is my pioneer for hoop 10 or four back. And just making sure that those balls are touching. You always got to be careful with thin takeoffs because it's easy for the blue ball not to move. And you don't want that to be happening at this stage of the game. So we've now run hoop 10, four back with the black. And if, again, if the turn ends after this hoop, accidentally probably, I give away yet another lift. So there are two lifts with each ball, the blue ball and the, and the black ball, if they run the hoops for themselves. And of course, the blue ball has avoided the lift on this uh, hoop, but the black ball hasn't. So I still need to be careful. So I'm going to play the yellow again now, and I need to get it down towards Rover Hoop. And I'm just going across to, to red as my pioneer for penult. And this is just a, 
a drive stroke. I'm just going to rotate the red ever, again, ever so gently again. Again, making sure that the, the balls are touching. When, 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 when lawns are quite hard and dry, it can be quite tricky to get them to be touching. and it sails through at a rate of knots. Now I also want the red ball down to root to rover. It's, it's uh, an escape ball. And you'll see why in a moment. And I'm going to do a roll stroke here that will get my, my black fairly close to the, uh, the blue ball, and I'm putting the, the red ball on the right of the hoop, the yellow is on the left of the hoop, I'm putting the red on the right of hoop 12. Rover. So here we are now down at Rover Hoop, and all four balls are around it. And this is going to be a rover peel and a very gentle roquet on the blue because it's directly in line with the hoop. We don't want to disturb that. So this is the third of the peels, hence triple peel. I'm just again lining it up quite carefully. Now you see the reason for having two uh, opponent balls here. Because the black balls only just crept through the hoop, it's handy to have one ball more or less alongside and another ball down there where I can um, hit it again. So I'm just going to take croquet off the, or I'm going to roquet the, uh, the red. And I'm going to go down to the yellow first in order to get behind the blue comfortably. So just a little thin take off on the red. And I'm going to put the yellow just the other side of blue so I can get very nicely behind the blue ball. Oh, I should have picked up my blue clip, by the way. Because both of my balls are now for the, for the peg, of course. So I'm now behind the blue ball and I just need to rush it up to the peg to give myself an easy peg shot. Well, that's a bit further away than I'd have liked. So I need to hit the peg with the blue on this croquet stroke. Again, it's one of those strokes where you will see people lying and looking at things 
And of course, you can always go look at the balls from the other side of the peg. And that's it. We won the game and it's a triple peel because it, the, the, the triple peel only counts as a triple peel if it's all done in one turn. If you run, if you peel through three hoops but in different turns, that is, doesn't count as a triple peel. And that's really the crux of the advanced game. Now, you may well ask, well, what happens if we hadn't done that diagonal spread leave and I'd just taken the blue ball around to, to Rover. Well, in that case, you don't give away a lift, you give away a contact. So instead of the opponent playing off a balk line, he can pick up either of his balls and take croquet off any other ball on the lawn. And that can be quite a, a dangerous thing to do. If, if you're gonna do that, the, the best sort of counter uh, or the best defense at the end of your turn, when you put the blue clip probably on Rover or even on the peg, and it's a bit challenging for to the opponent to put your ball on the peg because he'll probably want to peg you out. The, the, the best defense is to put a ball in each corner of the lawn. But remember, he can take croquet off any ball and a, a roll up to a hoop from a corner is not that difficult. So you need to be very careful if you're going to do um, uh, run the, 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 the whole gamut. But that only applies to the first ball, the, the, the blue in this case. If you go through um, uh, one back and four back with your second ball, the black, you don't give away a contact. So that's the guts of uh, the advanced game. As I said, it's, uh, I think it's, you could call it fairer croquet because at least the opponent's getting a chance to, uh, to, to, to reply in, in, in certain situations. Um, people who are good at doing uh, triple peels, for example, or even more, the, the, the real aficionados do sextuple peels. In other words, starting peeling at, uh, at one back and peeling, in this case, the blue ball through six hoops instead of three. And that takes even more doing. But I hope that's been useful for you, just as an introduction into the advanced game. Um, there are lots of books and videos and so on that you can look, look at, and particularly, as I said in the handicap uh, version, um, look at the Oxford Croquet uh, computerised lawn, uh, where Ian Plummer shows you how to do all this in, in, in a much better style than I've just done. But uh, I'm just trying to give you a feel for the terminology. Thank you.